Dear students, in this module, we are going to talk about the perspectives on social movements. Social movements are a complex phenomena, and different sociological perspectives offered varied insights and different aspects to be interpreted for the origin, processes, and impact. The first one that we are going to discuss is the deprivation theory. It argues that the social movements arise when people feel deprived of resources, rights, or opportunities that they believe that they should have. An example can be the agrarian movement of farmers in India, where they protested against the perceived deprivation caused by the new farm laws. When we see that there is a relative deprivation and people do feel that they are not being given their adequate share of rights, they do begin to agitate against that situation. Then we have resource mobilization theory. This theory emphasizes the importance of resources in the success of a social movement. So basically, this resource mobilization theory helps us understand that how a particular social movement can lead to become a successful social movement. These resources can be tangible like funding and infrastructure or intangible like organizational skills and networks. So basically, this theory tells that if a certain social movement have the available resources, it can become more successful, like it has adequate funding available to gather people for the common good or for the, for the shared cause, and particular infrastructure as well, if they can have the better communication mechanism, and if they can sustain that social movement because of the availability of infrastructure, that social movement can become more successful as compared to those movements who lack the funding as well as infrastructure. Then we have the political process theory, which proposes that the political opportunities, indigenous organizational strengths, and shared cognitions among the movement's proponents play a significant role in the rise of the outcome of the social movement. So the, the movements which are backed by the political powers can also become the successful social movements. For example, the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa, there were the shift in the international political climate. And if you, if you observe the history, had there not been the political back of the international powers, that apartheid movement would not have been that quickly successful. And the strong internal organization and shared consciousness against the racial segregation facilitated that movement's success. Then we have the new social movement theory that posits that the new social movements are more about the quality of life, identity, and human rights as compared to the conventional movements which were merely talking about the economic or political inequalities. The environmental movement, for example, which is for sustainable development and the prevalent, which are prevalent globally, can be seen from this perspective. Then we have the framing perspective which views the social movements as signifying the struggles over the production of mobilizing and counter-mobilizing ideas and meanings. The movement's success depends on how effectively it can frame or construct the meaning around the issue. Basically, when a social movement arises, it depends that how that social movement using different symbols and meanings can communicate or can better communicate their agenda to the public so that the public could 
develop a consensus, a shared consensus to become part of that social movement. And for that, they need to frame that agenda in a very particular way, in, a way, in such a way that it could mobilize the masses. For instance, the global movements against the climate change have effectively used the framing to emphasize the urgent need for action and challenging the complacency and advocating for the sustainable practices. Pakistani society too witnessed the diverse social movements. For instance, the teachers and doctors movements in Pakistan where the educators and medical practitioners protested for the better pay and better working conditions. And it can be understood from the deprivation theory's perspective. While the successful anti-polio campaign with the help of local health workers and global health organizations showcases the resource mobilization theory. So by applying these theories, we can better understand that how these movements have been framed and how these movements have been reflecting the relative deprivation and by applying that sociological lens, we can better interpret and predict the success or failure of such social movements. So these different perspectives with their unique emphasis and insights contribute to a more comprehensive understanding of social movements and their role in societal change.